Hey guys, what's up? It's Kaylee. If you're new here, I am a clothing and shoe reseller, meaning that I pick things up from thrift stores usually, but I buy them pre-owned and I resell them online for a profit. I sell on a couple different platforms, but eBay is definitely my main platform. And today I am coming on to share with you if you're new to reselling, if you're new to eBay, or even if you are thinking about starting on eBay, I'm going to share with you how to ship. I'm going to break it down in detail. I'm going to show you what to put in your listing to make sure that you are accurately describing your item when it comes to shipping. That way you have no surprises as far as Costco when it's time to ship the item. I'm also going to show you a screen share of me about to ship some of my items. So you'll ship a couple with me so you can kind of see what it looks like when it is time to ship the item. So when I first started reselling, I started on eBay. eBay is definitely, I feel like, the hardest platform to sell on for used clothing and shoes when it comes to shipping. Shipping really intimidated me when I first started because I don't know if it's just my generation, you can make fun of me in the comments, but prior to reselling, I had never really shipped anything. I hadn't gone to the post office, uh, even to like mail a letter. Like my, my parents helped me with it a couple times. Schools taught me to send via email and do everything online. So I had never shipped anything before. So it was a completely foreign concept to me and it was really intimidating and it seems, it seemed a lot more complicated back then than now. I'm like, I got it. It's actually really simple. So if you're currently struggling with that or you're too intimidated to start on eBay because of shipping, let's get into it. I'm going to show you that way you don't have to be worried about it anymore. So I've got all of these items to ship. Um, I'm not going to ship all of them with you, but I will show you a couple different ones. That way you can get an idea of how to ship things that are heavier, things that are a little bit more bulky, and just help you out with that. So for today's agenda, we are going to, number one, talk about the differences in shipping labels as far as first class and priority mail go. Number two, I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to ship a couple of my items, print the shipping label and get it ready to take to the post office. And then number three, I'm going to go on and show you how to put the shipping information when you are listing. And I know that that sounds a little bit backwards because you put it in, you know, before the item sells into your listing, but I think it's going to help you to see the end process before you start the beginning process. All right, so real quickly, let's talk about the differences in shipping services. So I just want to start out by saying there are multiple carriers you can use to ship your items. You can ship through FedEx, you can ship through UPS, or you can ship through USPS, the United States Postal Service, which is what I am going to recommend to you and what we are going to talk about today. Now, typically shipping through your local post office is going to be the most convenient and most cost effective way to ship your item if you are typically selling things that are smaller, like clothing and shoes. So within the United States Postal Service, they themselves have multiple shipping services, and we are only gonna talk about two of those today because those are the two that you are more than likely going to use, and I don't wanna confuse you by telling you about the other ones. So for clothing sellers, you are mostly going to use two types of services through your post office. That's going to be first class mail and then priority mail. So in a nutshell, Anything one pound or less is going to be first class mail. Anything one pound or more is going to be priority mail. Now there's a lot of details that are involved with explaining that to you, but just know that that's the gist. One pound or less, first class, one pound or more, priority mail. Now just a quick disclaimer, because I know that when you are creating your listing on eBay, you're going to see two different options. One's gonna be called priority mail, and one's gonna be called Priority Mail Express. These are two different services and you wanna make sure that you're selecting the right one. So Priority Mail is going to be the one that you're going to use for items for one pound or more. Priority Mail Express is an, another expedited service that moves even faster than Priority Mail, but it's going to cost you a lot more and you're probably not even gonna to wanna to ever use that one. So when it comes to first class and priority mail, there are different methods you can use to ship within both of those methods. 
So first class meal, like I said, is going to be items that are one pound or less. Now, I just want to say that it's only one pound or less for first class if you are shipping through eBay. You get commercial rates through shipping through eBay, meaning you click print label on your screen, you print it through your computer, through your printer, and then you adhere the label to your package. That is going to give you commercial rates versus walking into the post office and you're paying retail rates. So you're going to save money by printing online, you're going to save time, and you're also going to have more options available to you based on weight. So that's what I'm going to show you later on in the video. I will do a screen share and show you how I print through eBay. If you do not have this option and you have to go to walk into the post office, then just know that first class is, I believe, 12 or 13 ounces or less. So you don't get those additional ounces up to a pound. If you walk into a post office as a retail customer and you want to ship something for first class, but the item weighs like 14 or 15 ounces, they will move you up to priority mail. So highly suggested that you print online if you've got a computer and a printer and you're capable of doing that. So with first class, we've mentioned that your package weighs one pound or less. Now remember that this is the package, not just the item. So I sold this shirt. This is just a Lane Bryant top. It's pretty lightweight and it's, I can already tell, going to go for first class because it's going to be less than a pound. But I can't only weigh this item and determine my shipping. I have to know how much it's going to weigh after it's in a bag, in a box, any packing materials that I include, any thank you notes, anything that I put in that package, including the package material, bubble wrap, the cardboard, the bag, again, it all counts as your package weight. So we're weighing the total package, not just the weight of the item. So if your total package with everything included weighs one pound or less, you're gonna wanna ship with first class. If your total weight with everything package is going to weigh more than one pound, you're going to want to use priority mail. Now, as far as how fast the item ships with both of these services, they're relatively about the same. I just went on their website and they're claiming between one and three days for both of them. So they run about the same. Again, it's mainly based on the weight of the item. So if you tried to take an item that was two pounds, you would not be able to print a label, nor would you be able to go to the post office and ship it first class because it weighs more than a pound. But if you had an item that weighed six ounces and it could be shipped with first class, you could ship it first class or they would also allow you to bump it up to priority mail, which would be more expensive, but they would allow you to do that. With both of these services, they have a dimension limit of 108 combined dimensions. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but just know 108 inches is the maximum. If you're shipping clothing and shoes, you're hardly ever going to deal with this, so don't worry about it too much. So now that we know how much your item weighs, we need to determine which shipping method you're going to use within those two categories. So with first class, I could put something in a box or in a bag. Either way, I want to keep in mind that a box is a little bit heavier than a bag and might push me over that one pound limit. So with first class mail, you are basically putting it in your own packaging or packaging that you have purchased online. When it comes to priority mail, the United States Postal Service currently offers free shipping supplies for priority mail packages, and they will actually give you free shipping boxes and bags that are branded with priority mail that you can use to ship your items. Now, what you can't do is take one of these priority mail labeled bags and boxes that you got for free and ship an item first class in it. They will not allow you to do that. If you're using a free shipping supply that is branded for priority mail, you have to use it for priority mail. So I do sell a lot of clothing and shoes that do push me over a pound. These are typically things like jeans, jackets, shoes, things of that nature that are a little bit heavier. I tend to use priority mail. Now, when it comes to priority mail, I can use their branded supplies that I get for free, or I can even use my own supplies that I have at home. So when you're shipping priority mail, there are two different ways that you can choose to ship. You can choose to ship priority mail through a flat rate option or through a weight and dimensions distance option. 
You're going to see these options later in the video when I go to ship my order, but just know they have several different packaging that you can use to ship at a flat rate. Now what that means is that if I want to ship an item using this flat rate bag, it costs my customer a little over $8 to ship this bag, and I can put anything in this bag up to up to four pounds. So it'll always tell you the weight on here, and then it'll also give you the dimensions on your shipping supplies if you order the free ones through the United States Postal Service, which I recommend you do if you are planning on shipping priority meal because there's no reason to pay for supplies when you get them for free. So on this bag, the maximum weight is four pounds. Not that it really matters because if you're selling clothing, you're probably not gonna put anything in this bag that's over four pounds. Stuff that's over four pounds isn't going to fit in here. So if I can fit anything in here under four pounds, it's going to ship at a flat rate and it'll also cost me a flat rate to ship it. Now on the other side, I can use a box that is calculated based on weight and based on distance. So I can take this box and put just about anything in it and depending on where it's going, it's gonna cost me more or less. So if I put this shirt that we talked about before in this bag and I was shipping it to the same state that I live in, it's probably going to cost me about, about like $7. But if I was to put this in this box and ship it to California, which is across the United States for me, it would probably cost me around $10 to do that. It would cost more based on the distance that it was going. Also, if I wasn't shipping the shirt and I was putting a much heavier item in here, let's say I was putting shoes in this box, it's going to cost me more to even ship it in my own state because the item is going to be heavier. So certain ones charge based on distance and based on weight. And then other ones like the flat rate envelope that I showed you before, no matter what the distance is or what the weight up to a certain amount, it's going to go for a flat rate fee. Now, when we're talking about these two, you are going to make decisions based on which one is going to save you more money. And in turn, because the shirt that we talked about before weighs so little, I would actually put it in a first class envelope because it weighs less than a pound and it would actually only cost me about three to four dollars. So you can see shipping first class versus priority mail, there is a huge difference in price. So if your item does weigh one pound or less, you definitely want to opt for the first class shipping. Now really quickly, some supplies that you're going to need in order to ship your items. If you're planning on doing calculated shipping, you are going to want to have a tape measure in order to measure how long your package is if you are using your own shipping supplies. You're also going to need a scale in order to weigh your items and also your packages once they are ready to ship. Now I have a couple of these. You can order ones on Amazon that are actual shipping scales, and those are really nice because you can plug them in. This one, if you don't want to order online, you don't have an Amazon account, or maybe it just costs you too much money or you need one right now, you can actually go get a shipping scale at Walmart, and you can actually find this in the kitchen section. So this is actually a kitchen scale, but it works in the exact same way, and it is just as accurate. Um, most of the time they have the battery powered ones, which is nice because you can move it around and um, just take it with you as you're shipping. So I have, this is one of the kitchen ones that I have. I think I picked it up for like, I don't know, like $13 and the battery hasn't gone out yet. It turns itself off whenever it's not in use. So definitely going to want to have a shipping scale if you're planning on shipping on your own. All right, let's ship some items. All right guys, so I am purposefully not showing you a part of my screen because I don't wanna share any of the buyer's information. So just keep that in mind as we are going through. You're only seeing part of my screen here. So I'm going to go to my seller hub, going to my orders. So you can see several of my orders here. Now, of course, I don't want to show you any buyer information, so some of that's going to be blurred out. But when you go to print your label, it's really simple. When you go to your orders, you can see I've got a couple I need to ship out. So I've got a couple um, bits of information here. 
Um, this is my custom label, so it tells me like where the item is. So as you saw, I've already pulled those items. And now I'm not going to print all of them with you today because I have several to print out. But let's go ahead and do a couple just to get in the groove of things and get an idea of what it is like. So we have a that Lane Bryant shirt that I talked about. We're going to go ahead and print shipping label. So again, guys, I cut out the left side over here um, because I don't want to show all of our information. Um, I think that that's fair. But on the left hand side, it is going to tell you which shipping the buyer selected. And so for this one, it is first class. Now the buyer is only going to select what you have put in your listing. And we're going to talk about that later. So right now I have everything preset based on what I listed the item for as far as shipping goes. So you can see when I listed my item, I put that the dimensions were 12 by 12 by 4 and that it was going to weigh 8 ounces altogether with the package. This is a very old listing, so I'm actually inaccurate on that when I originally listed it. And we're going to have to do some adjustments, which is good because I'm going to show you that you can change things if you make a mistake. So with this one, I have my Lane Bryant shirt. I'm going to go ahead and put this into a bag and get it ready to be shipped for first class. So I've got my entire package here. It is ready to be shipped out. Just a reminder, since this is going first class, I can only use packaging that isn't the free priority mail shipping supplies. So this is just an eBay branded poly mailer. So this is my own packaging and I'm going to ship this first class. So the first thing I've got to do is weigh this complete item. Again, it has to include the packaging that you put the item in. So we're going to go ahead and weigh this whole thing on my shipping scale right here. So this is weighing exactly 7.0 ounces. Now, whenever this happens, I usually go ahead and round up just to be safe. And the reason I round up a little bit is because we're going to be printing that shipping label and slapping it onto the package. That is technically included in the weight. So if I am this close to putting myself over the edge to go to 7.1 ounces, I've then got to round up to 8 ounces. So I might as well just do that just in case the shipping label pushes us over. So right now I'm at 7.0, but I think the shipping label is going to push us a little closer to 7.1. So we are going to round up to 8, and you'll see that here on the screen. So I've already got eight ounces preset here because that's what I thought it was going to weigh with the packaging, but I used to use different bags. So it used to be a 12 inch 12 by 12 inch by four inch bag. Um, now I've actually got a 10 by nine by however high the package is. And that's why I said, make sure that you have something to measure how tall things are. So I'm going to put three inches. Make sure you always round up. You can't put decimal. So if it, you know, had a height of 2.5 inches, I can't put 2.5. I have to round up. So I have now changed my shipping dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and hit update. Now it's automatically going to default to whatever you put in your listing, whether that's right or wrong. That is what it's going to default for. So here you can see that this is going to cost me with what I have and my option being first class package, $3.25. Now, as we scroll down, remember I said you can upgrade to priority mail, but you can't do something that's more than a pound to first class. So if this is less than a pound, which it is, I can actually upgrade the customer to priority mail packaging, but there'd be no reason to do that because it's going to cost me about $4 more. Now it's really important in your listings, if you say you're gonna ship something first class, you need to ship it first class. If you say you're gonna ship something priority mail, you need to ship it priority mail. The only exception would be if you are saying you're gonna ship an item first class and then you upgrade them to priority, maybe because you're, you underestimated the weight and it pushed you into priority mail, 
that would be okay because you're actually upgrading the customer. But if you told the customer you were going to ship with priority mail and then you realize that your item, once all the packaging is together, weighs less than a pound, you can't downgrade them to first class. It'll allow you to do it, but your customer can get upset with you. So make sure that you're always either upgrading or sticking with the package information that you said you were going to ship out with. So this one, I am going to use my first class options. I've got my dimensions correct here and we are gonna go ahead and print. Now I use sticky labels, but if you only have uh, paper, you could just print it and then cut it out and use clear tape to adhere it to your bagger box. So we are now on the print label page. I obviously can't show you the label because I can't show you the information as to where it's going and where it's coming from, but it'll pop up in order for you to be able to print. So we're going to go ahead and print that. Okay, so I have now got my sticky label here to put on my package. If you had any issues and you needed to, you could go to open label here, download the label, whatever you needed to to do to print it. So I am just going to peel this off, stick it to my package. And here is my package all done. Now all I need to do at this point is drop it off at the post office. I have nothing else to do as far as payment goes because I've already purchased the label. So I just take it in and give it to the counter people inside. Okay guys, so from here, we are just gonna go to ship your next item. So right here, I've got a kind of a bulkier item. It's a pretty thick sweater. So I'm gonna go ahead and ship this one. So here is that sweater. Um, I was able to fit it into a padded flat rate envelope. You can see it's kind of snug, but that's okay because it's not popping out, it fits. So I got it into a padded flat rate envelope which means I am going to pay a flat rate fee for this and I'll show you why I chose this option. So here we are on my shipping page. Now, when I originally set my listing, I did choose to ship it via priority mail, pad a flat rate envelope. But if I wanted to, since it would still be priority mail, I could choose any of these other options. So for the customer, it costs them $8.40 currently for the shipping option, it's costing me $7.52. So I am saving money. This is how much it is gonna cost me to ship this item, so $7.52. Now if you scroll up here, you can see that there is a custom size, so that would be if you wanted to do it by weights and dimension, or if you wanted to do the carrier packaging, their preset options. So here I have custom size. So if I chose to do it custom size and I've got my information right here, you can see I'm over a pound and I chose to ship it with my, my eBay branded bag, I would have to pay $7.60 versus the padded flat rate option, which is $7.52. So it's only eight cents, but more often than not, it's going a further distance and it's going to save you more money that way. So always choose the cheapest option. Now also, if I wanted to, I could scroll down through the carrier packages. There's also a flat rate envelope option, which would have been cheaper for me, except this item's not gonna fit in that kind of packaging. And you can do your own research on those and get an idea as to what you're gonna be able to use. Scrolling down, I could have also used some boxes. So, Regional A's are by distance, and then regional B's are also by distance. So depending on how far the item is going, it may cost you more or less to go with this option. And this is a box that you can order through USPS's website and get them for free, or walk into your local post office and pick up one of these boxes for free as well. If I went with the medium flat rate box, which is way too big for the item that I'm needing to ship, I would be paying even more at $12.80. So you can see there's a couple different options here and based on what I chose, I am gonna be paying the least amount. So we're gonna go with priority mail padded flat rate envelope. Now again, because I put in the listing a padded flat rate envelope, 
I am offering the customer priority mail shipping, but I could still choose another option within priority mail. They would still get it at the same time. It would just be different packaging, which is fine. Just choose whatever the cheapest option is for you. So I am choosing the padded flat rate envelope for this one. So at this point I have printed my label. I'm just adhering it to the package. And here is my package with the shipping label on it and I am good to go. So we're gonna go to ship your next item. You can see here at the top, there's an option for print labels in bulk. As a beginner, I don't recommend that you do that. I recommend you do them one by one because you might get confused and send a buyer the wrong item. So as a beginner, I would recommend just doing them one by one as we're doing here. So let's go ahead and ship a pair of shoes now. I've got these Zara heels that I need to send out. So I'm gonna go ahead and ship those. So this is how much I estimate the package weighing. Of course, we're going to go ahead and put the package together and make sure that we do have everything correct because sometimes it can vary by one or two ounces. So we want to make sure that we have everything correct in here. So let me go ahead and get that packaged up real quick. All right, guys. So I've got those shoes packaged up. So I decided to put them in a USPS shoe box, which is calculated for price based on weight and distance. So this is called the shoe box. The size of this box is eight inches by six inches by 15 inches, and that's rounded up. You can't do half sizes, so always round up when you're putting your dimensions into the computer. Um, so I weighed this. I originally had my weight as one pound, one ounce on this listing. After weighing it with the box, I actually have quite a bit of variance. So I am at one pound, 6.2 ounces. So I'm going to round up to one pound, seven ounces. So I'm going to need to change that on here. And you can see the eight, six by 15. So we've now updated. So because this is by distance, it's not a flat rate and it's not a regional. I am going to choose the priority mail package and that's just basically what you're going to use for anything else that's calculated, whether it's the shoe box or you're using your own packaging. So I've got the USPS priority mail package here. This is going to cost me $10.85 if I choose to ship this way. Now, if we scroll up, I'm gonna go over to carrier packages because you always wanna make sure if there is another box that it will fit in that may be cheaper for you, that's the way you wanna ship. So I've already done my research to know that that's the best option for me, but I'm gonna show you why. So I could have put it into a flat rate envelope. However, the shoes would have gotten damaged, so that's not an option for me. So I definitely wanted to stick with a box for these shoes. So scrolling down, I could have used a regional box A and based on where it was going would have cost me $11.74. And remember, we were going to spend less than that using the shoe box. I could have put it in a medium flat rate box, which is a flat rate fee for me of $12.80. Could have also gone with the regional B, which would have cost me $21.23. So Based on these options and what boxes it would fit in, I am choosing to go with the shoe box, which is just a calculated priority mail package. So I'm gonna pay 1085 because that is the cheapest option for me. And the buyer paid 1490 for their shipping. So based on the discount that I get through shipping online through eBay, I am saving about $4 shipping online. So that's why you wanna ship online versus going into the post office. Okay guys, so now that we have seen what it looks like to ship the item, let's backtrack a little bit and go into the listing and see how we should structure our listing. That way we can make sure we are getting the most accurate rates from our customer as far as what they're paying for shipping so that we don't overcharge the customer or undercharge the customer and that we'll always be able to ship accordingly. 
So here on the screen, this is just a random listing I pulled up, and this is what you're going to see both on the desktop, which is what I'm on right now, and it's also going to give you these options on the app if you choose to list through the app. So when I am listing an item, here are my different options. You can do a flat rate cost, meaning that you charge the buyer a flat rate. I don't recommend that you do that, but maybe it's something you choose to do later on in the future. But as a beginner, I would recommend that you stick with calculated shipping. So we are going to go to calculated costs varies by buyer location. In this way, no matter where your buyer, no matter where your buyer is located, you will always be getting the proper amount of shipping from them. That way you can cover your cost of shipping as well. So from there, we have got different options. You know, we talked about before going through FedEx or UPS. Um, you can do that, but again, I recommend as a beginner, you stick with um, just going through your post office. So here are our options. You can see there are multiple options. As a clothing seller, if that's what you're selling, clothing and shoes, I would definitely say stick with the first class or the priority mail. So here is our first class. If the item weighed a pound or less and you're planning on printing through eBay, this is what you would select. Based on your dimensions of your bag, you can put your dimensions and then just kind of estimate the height that you think it would be. Because remember, you can change this later when you are printing your shipping label. As long as there's not a drastic difference, you're not going to see a difference in price. And then here we would want to put how much our item weighs and is estimated to weigh with the weight of the package. So again, this is everything included, any packing materials, the weight of the item, and the weight of the box or bag that you're putting it in. So with that in mind, you always want to add more than what your item weighs. So what I do when I list is if I'm listing a t-shirt, I will weigh the t-shirt, and then I know that that t-shirt is more than likely going to go into a bag. I am going to ship it first class because I know that even with the bag, it's going to weigh less than a pound. I am going to put the average weight of the poly mailer included into my shipping. So what I mean by that is if I am using my poly mailer to ship, here's one that a t-shirt would fit in that I know I'm more than likely going to use. You can weigh yours. Mine weighs 0.4 ounces. So, so with 0.4 ounces, I would then add the weight of my item. So let's say the t-shirt weighed 6 ounces. It's now going to be 6.4 ounces with the weight of the bag. So then I would round up to 7 ounces. Your best bet with first class, if you plan on using a bag, is just to round up to the next ounce. If you are closer, let's say it's the item weighs 6.9 ounces, and you are going to use a bag, more than likely you're going to want to round up to eight because you're closer to that seven ounce threshold and this will probably push you over. So if that were that t-shirt case, I could put seven ounces there and that would be it. And whenever my buyer purchased, no matter where they were located at, because this is calculated, they're always going to pay the amount of shipping that is due to you. Now we're not going to get into shipping outside of the United States. I'm not even going to go there um, because as a beginner, I recommend that you stay within your country before you venture off into international sales because it can get a little bit complicated. So let's say that we were going to ship priority mail and we had shoes. Now I typically use that shoe box, so I already know the dimensions for that. So I would weigh my shoes. And then what you can do is weigh the weight of the box and then maybe write all these things down. That way you know about how much each box weighs. So for me, a box weighs about between five ounces and eight ounces, depending on which one I'm using. I usually add eight ounces to whatever my weight is and that covers my box plus my shipping materials. So let's say that my shoes weighed one pound, one ounce, and I know I have my average weight of the box and packing materials being eight ounces, I would then round to one pound, nine ounces. So in that case, I would do this. 
you'll see here that there's options for different weights. I highly recommend you do custom weight because at some point you're going to have to weigh the item and it's going to be way more accurate if you just go ahead and do it now. Now let's say I'm shipping something as large and as heavy as hiking boots. Maybe they've got a steel toe. In my experience, they are super heavy and it is not worth it to ship it calculated. So because I want to make sure my buyer wants to purchase the item and not pay outrageous shipping, I might choose an option like a medium flat rate box. That way I know they're not getting overcharged because it's probably the option I'm going to use anyways and it's going to save them money in the long run. So if I were to ship with priority mail calculated and let's say it was like three pounds, nine ounces, which is probably where a package full of hiking boots would be, um, it was probably going to cost the buyer somewhere between like 10 and $20, maybe more depending on where they're at. So because of that, I would probably opt to do the medium flat rate box. And that way I know that they are going to get charged a pretty minimal fee for shipping and they're not going to be deterred away from my listing. Same thing with the padded flat rate envelopes. If you after a while, get a feel for what's going to fit into a padded flat rate envelope. You would then choose to put it into a flat rate envelope versus putting it into a calculated by distance bag. And then you're going to save your buyer more money and they're more likely to purchase the item from you because they're also saving on shipping. I hope that that makes sense. All right, guys, so that is it for my tips on shipping as a beginner. I hope you guys learned a little something from this video. If you are intimidated by shipping, give it a try. List a few items. Once you sell, you'll really start to get the hang of it, and you'll start to learn which boxes or bags you can put items in that are going to save you and the buyer money. Just remember, make an accurate listing. Priority mail is one pound or more, and first class is one pound or less. It certainly comes with experience, and if you make a few mistakes, that is just going to help you be better in the long run. So don't be afraid to make those mistakes. Yes, it may cost you a couple dollars here and there, but you're really going to start to get the hang of shipping, and it's going to be super easy. It's not that difficult, and it's not that intimidating. So I hope this helped you guys. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you next time.